Easy Tigers. I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back. As always, special thanks to the guys that have made these videos possible. If it isn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to go out and explore these places and give you my thoughts on these places and try and connect dots for us. So if you want to join the gang, the links are in the description. Let's go. So, as you know, I've been in the Peak District looking for sources, chasing waterfalls and doing all sorts of stuff. So in this particular episode, I'm actually going inside mountains on a boat to see what I go And again, in my eyes, this is extremely old stuff. Extremely old. Now, we was going through the mountain, we, we descended 600 feet. And we come to bottomless pits, waterfalls and all sorts of stuff under in this mountain. It's not even underground. It's not even underground. We'll get to all this in a minute. Alright, so let's go. Right, so this is the actual area and it's quite a vast area that we're looking at by the way. And what they've done is they've dammed up these two rivers up here. They've dammed them up for some reason. It seems like they've dismantled and disconnected the water supply underground, which was done donkeys years ago, which is underneath all of this by the way. And they broke it into individual caves. So there's like four or five show caves around this area. And about a handful of quarries. So you can you just know what a guan. So they've been disconnecting it underground. And they've been rerouting it above ground into dams. So this is where we start, right? And it is actually 251 metres above sea level. Doesn't this geezer, how, how was your luck? It's Martin Leakey, isn't it? <laughs> Big up, Martin. But yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so we're up here in these mountains, and, the, and this is like bang in the middle of the Peak District, which is in the middle of the United Kingdom. And if you ask me, I believe that there, this was the main water source for the country, and it dissipated everywhere, and it just got everywhere. So you've got all these, well, you just got one big network of caves here, and, and tunnels and waterways underground. But like I said, it's been broken up into so many different caves. Now we're gonna have a little read up, and this is what it says. So this is the narrative. The cave system consists of a horizontal lead miners adit, a level passageway driven horizontally into the hillside. And it's 200 meters below ground leading to the cavern itself, a limestone cave. Now let me just point out, we're 251 meters above sea level, right? And it's saying that this goes 200 meters below ground level. Now, if you ask me, it probably meets up with the, with the, uh, the sea level underground. That's what it seems like to me. So, the narrow adit is permanently flooded, so after descending a long staircase, access to the cave is made by boat. At the end of the adit, which is just an entrance basically, the cave opens up with a, a, a floor spur veins, stalactites and stalagmites, and a so-called bottomless pit. The chamber has an underground lake of 20 metres high, and a waterfall and an extremely deep vertical shaft now choked with to within 20 meters of the surface by rock spoil dumped by miners. The original depth of the shaft has been an estimated amount of spoil placed in the shaft over the years at around 150 meters, which is 490 feet. The mine was developed in 1770s, but the limited lead ore deposits meant that it was not profitable and was closed down by 1790. Now that's a load of cobblers. Because in a minute I'm going to show you a map and it's literally mapping out um, about four or five miles underneath the Peak District. Now you're not going to do all that if there was nothing for you to mine under there, you know? It's just a lot of work. And like I said, even when they shut this mine down, they found out that other mines locally, like around this area, all connected to each other. I'm going to show you all this. So they went in there for 20 years and they cleaned it out. That's all they done. They weren't getting nothing out of there. They were cleaning it up. Making it into a tourist attraction. That's all they do with these sites. So like I said, a connection was discovered in 2006 between the Speedwell Cavern System and Titan. And Titan is the largest natural shaft in the United Kingdom, which is 400, sorry, 400. Yeah, 464 feet higher. Now, if you was mining down here for 20 years, then surely there would be some record of all these little places that spur off. Because I'm going to show you a map now and it's going to knock your socks off. Because underneath the Peak District, there is a rabbit's warren. So this is a map of the underground. And I don't mean like the London underground. I mean this is inside the mountains. Like underneath all that block work in the cliffs in the mountains. So here, here this, this would be spread out over about five or six different cave systems. 
and this is you them showing you all the connections now up here is where we entered in Speedwell Cavern and the bottomless pit is where we ended but if you carry on looking down to here you see the Titan but we'll look at Titan later on but I'm just showing you there's a connection from Titan to down here uh, sorry to Speedwell to Titan and that's almost a thousand kilometers away so what a guan there right eh? if that weren't done when they're clearing it out in, in the 20 years from 1770 to 1790 when was these done and also the main thing like why was this done me personally I think it's to do with water and I think like I said at the beginning of this video I think in the center of this United Kingdom you've got the Peak District which is an outstanding natural area of beauty and I believe that all this mountain range was supplying water locally but locally as in a large area so we're descending 600 feet now which would be I guess around 200 meters and it's all yellow brick down here I will point out it's all yellow bricks and you've got really old stonework as well this is definitely by the way not 1770 100% so we're walking down here to get onto a little boat and the boat will take us through and the stuff that I found down here is going to knock your socks off so like I said, we descended 600 feet, but don't forget, we're already 251 meters above sea level. So it's leveling out. We're not far from the sea level when we get to where we were meant to be inside this mountain. But one thing is very peculiar, and I couldn't help but notice, and, and you're gonna see this, and it's really strange, and I don't know what to say about it, is that going through these tunnels, I noticed, right, that there was all sorts of stuff. There's another tunnel down here that got completely blanked, and what I noticed is when we was going past these sort of things, the, the tour guide would make a joke and you wouldn't even get to see that and you'd laugh about some stupid little story that he'd made up. And no disrespect to him, no disrespect to him at all when I say that. But my point is, he'd literally take your, your attention away from looking at other stuff by these little stories. So down here was another passageway. I'd like to know where that led to. Now, like I said, this place was full of scratch marks all up the wall and, and the narrative and the people that write the narrative like to say that these scratch marks are done by hand tool marks and they're not that. Now, the tour guide tried to put me under pressure by saying the boat's going to crash if I don't push the boat away. Done it one-handed. <laughs> So what I will say is these scratch marks, do these look like hand tool marks to you? This looks like it should be in Baalbek. Looks like it should be in Malta, Turkey, Iran. Do you know what I mean? These marks are all over the world in the most oldest of places. So I can't deny these facts. And another thing that I noticed, it was very peculiar, and I can't work out what is going on with this. If you look, you'll see these little lines running across the ceiling and the wall, and people go, oh, it's when the boat hit here and there. Well, listen, it is nothing to do with that. Look at the scratch marks. Because these marks are like imprints. They're not drill marks because there's no rotational marks. It's like literally like they've been left in a mold or something. It's very peculiar stuff. But I'm going to show you. It's almost like this has been lined with a concrete and then scratched up. Let me show you. Like, I didn't work it out till the end. But look at these marks here. These are like imprints of something. Now, you're telling me this is not a form of concrete. Look at it. And this bit here, it goes in about 30 centimetre, 30 mil. And every single one's the same size. So you've got this little entrance bit here. Look at it. Look at this. Uh, what is this? So like I said, there's no rotational marks because it's not been drilled. It's like they've left these bars in there for some reason. And then they've just took them out. Like, I can't work out what's happened here, but this was all over the place. Look at that. Like, there's no stress around the edges of this, like something has been hitting it for ages. It's literally an imprint of a bar. And my fingers in there are... Like that end was closed and the other end was open, but look how many there are. And these and these are not the deepest points. If this was a boat hitting something, it'd hit the points that are lower. Do you get me? And they're not even consistent. Some are going at different angles. It's very peculiar. It's like they've put a mould over over this tunnel that we're in. I, I can't work it out what's going on here. 
but the facts are you've got these ancient scratch marks and then you've got these perfect imprints of these bars. It's just unbelievable stuff. I can't work it out. And like I said, it cannot be no way in this world where boats are hitting things because these are not at the lowest point. Some of them are at the highest points. Like you wouldn't even get to these points. Look at this. Look at it. And look at the angles of some of these. Do you know what it seems like? It seems like they've like, I, I, I don't know what it seems like, but look at the angle of that one. Like the boat's going down at a 45 degree angle, is it? Oh, give me a break. Break. So it's very strange stuff going on. Very, very strange. It's, it's oh, God, God, I don't know. I don't know what to say there. I'm actually lost for words. I don't know what to say about all these marks. Scratch marks, yes. Clearly, it's some sort of machinery. It's not done by hand. Now, this, this, when I say the guy talks about stuff at major points, this is one of them. So we've come to a, a cross section, but it's not actually a cross section. We're just going down a straight line. But look at this bit up here. There's a hatch going up. You've got all this old world block work either side of it blocking up two passages. So this would have been a cross intersection. And also you've got blue bricks on the other side. So I'm just gonna show you this in normal time. I just wanted to slow it down so you didn't miss it. But now look, I'm gonna play it again in normal. So like I said, he makes jokes when we go past these bits. So you didn't look at them. But obviously I do, I'm looking for this sort of stuff. So what a go on there, right? Eh? What a go on there. Just unbelievable stuff. Really is unbelievable stuff. And if you think about it, this must have they must have lined it with some sort of concrete or something to make it watertight. Because you and I know that most buildings, uh, most buildings, most mountains look like they're made out of some sort of block work. You might not call it block work, but it doesn't half look like block work. So like the water would seep through them cracks. So I reckon this part has literally been aligned. So yeah, we entered here up here and where we ended up was here so it took us about an hour to get there now you see a little door what was, what was going on was I going to cut a door out like what is this what a go on here but I thought I'd just pause that so you can have a look and work out let me know what you think was going to go on there like I honestly think honestly I believe that mountains were uh, the main reason we have water. I think they were designed so the water for somehow, maybe it's to do with the tides going in and out, it's pushing the water up because I believe, I believe that I'm actually around sea level now. I believe I'm around sea level now because we had to descend 600 feet. So I reckon this pressure pushes the water in the mountain somewhere along the line underground and the pressure pushes it out at the top through cracks and then runs back down. That is my educated guess so far. But look, see these lines, what are they? What are these lines? Look at them, look at that. It's, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like they've put a sheet over it to put the concrete on it. And, the, and these are the metal bars, like just to, I don't know, it's very strange. And look, they light up little sections like this and the geezer stopped here to show you this point. It didn't stop to show you the other bit, they've all been blocked up but he wanted to show you this bit here. Then they put, specifically put a light there. Can you see how they choose what they want to show you? And they wanted to show you an absolute piece of poo. I mean, what was that? What was that? That looks like something that someone tried to cut in 1770 or something, you know? And realized, now oh, we can't actually do nothing. Again, you've got all these lines and that they're going through the scratch marks. It's very peculiar stuff going on here. And again, there's another one of these little like cavities. I think they're just done, just just added. It's just for the boat journey to make it look like, yeah, we was digging here. And again, like this was a mine. Like, why the bloody hell, sorry about that, are you gonna do it so far away when it takes so long to get the material out? And it's and they said it's flooded. But I I, I reckon this has always been like this. Like, always full of water. Now, we're coming out now because we're getting to a point where the bottomless pit was. So there was meant to be a waterfall in here. <laughs> but luckily, when you get to this point, what they've done is they've actually um, got some video footage of them walking through the caves and the water's flowing. 
You see the bit of blue pipe hanging out of there. <laughs> so yeah, I reckon they've just like disconnected the uh, the water in there and just rerouted it. So it goes to a dam, which is very local. Yeah, look at that. So that's 66 foot up to the top of there. And then if you look down, there's another 66 foot down to the bottomless pit. Now this is what I was saying, they were filling up for years and it never ever filled up. The water, never, the water line never grew. But that's because the water was spouting out at an overflow somewhere else down the line. So they're filling it up with rock spoil, which another thing, if you're mining, why are you throwing away? It's just, it's just a lot. This mining business is a load of cobblers. Yes, okay, they mine for coal. Yeah, no problem. They mine for diamonds, but that's it other, and other materials. But well, like, in here, like this is limestone, man. The whole thing is limestone. Like and nothing else. But look, and then you've got this tunnel here that's been blocked up. Like you're not allowed to go down there. So we've come from one tunnel, which is opposite to what I'm looking at now. So if I did a 180 and turn around, I'll be facing the way that I come. Now if I did a 90 degree to the left, I've then got the bottom of the pit here. I'm just trying to paint the picture best for you so you can see it. So this used to be a waterfall here, going into that bottomless pit. Now either they're pumping water down there or they're taking water out one or the other. That's why they've got the blue pipe there. So this is the, the network. I mean, the best way to show you is, is still images where um, the resolution is very good. But you can see they've got an air supply going down to this place and they've also got a water supply. Like I said, they're either sucking the water out or they're pumping it back in. Something's going on down there. And every now and then you could almost see block work hiding, but it's, that's just, maybe that's just me in my mind, I'm not sure. But look at this, the bottomless pit, eh? This is what sold it to me. When I got there, I was so disappointed. <laughs> Let me show you what it, what it looked like. And this is actually an image of the two exits that we just walked, I walked, got a boat through one of them and the other ones that we just looked through that was barriered off. But what this image shows is the ginormous waterfall going into the bottomless pit with either side of the uh, adits, as you want, entrances if you want to call it. Now the next bit is pure golden nuggets, pure golden nuggets, because the people that are in here that are associated with this, um, this cavers club, they, they, they was in there when the water supply was on in this place. Uh, this has obviously been disconnected now because you can see that the water's not flying through that, sh that shaft that I just showed you. So when these guys were in there, they, they recorded some footage and this is it. I'm just gonna let, you pl let it play because in some parts of this you can see water gushing. And you might, basically I'm underground by the way filming a TV. Look at the water. Where's this water coming from? This gushing. This is inside a mountain, by the way. Look at this. Inside a mountain. So how is the water doing this? Look at the flow of that water. I mean, this is golden nuggets. This is golden nuggets. Look at that. So it must be pushed up by seawater up through the cracks inside the mountains. That's the only way I can explain this. Like, there's no other explanation. Again, like I said, I was recording this on a TV. So look, you've got boulder piles. Who put the boulder piles down there, eh? Did nature do that? <laughs> I think this is, like, we, this, this just looks natural to us, but I think everything is being designed specifically. You've got a big beam of wood there. You've got ventilation going there. Looked like a bit of skin was hanging off the wall a minute ago. But yeah, like I said, I was recording this off of a TV on the wall underground, so that's why you've got the little black bits around the screen. I weren't expecting this to be like golden nuggets. I thought it was just going to be some little prop of a video, you know? But yeah, there's some proper good stuff in it. You can see the water supplies going in. It's very cold down there as well, you know? Very, very cold. So there you go, the bottomless pit. And just underneath my feet would have been the water falling down. Now, let's go to Titan for a second. So it goes to say that Titan is a natural cave near Castleton in the Derbyshire Peak District. It is the deepest shaft of any known cave in Britain at 464 feet. The existence of Titan was revealed in November 2006 following its discovery 
on January the 1st, 1999, after Cave has discovered connections from some other mine to both Speedwell and Pete Cavern. So that's quite interesting, right? So they, they was mining it for 20 years, and then they, they did no record of where they went or what they dug out, yeah, and, and all that history got lost. And then a couple of hundred years later, some people are doing some expedition in there and then find that these tunnels all linked up underground. So you've got everything linking up. You've got all the cave systems in that area linking up. And that picture in the background is a map of all of that. So previously, the deepest known underground shaft in Britain had been the Gaping Gill on the slopes of the Ingleborough in the Yorkshire Dales. In 1793, Plumtree wrote a paper describing a network of passages and shafts that went beyond the well-known Speedwell Cav Cave mine system near Castleton. See, that goes to show, like, three years after the place shut down, some guy goes in there and starts mapping it all out. Really, this should have been done um, when the miners were down there, no? And there'd be records of that. So, anyway, his account took him down the Speedwell Canal and deep into the cave system. But his journal described mined passages worked mostly in darkness. I wonder why it was in dark. Then went far beyond what had been explored. So that tells you that these miners were not down there mining. They were just clearing it out in the dark so no one could see what had gone. And they only went a certain way. So it's very, very, <laughs> very strange. The plum tree account specifically mentions a way out of to the surface some 230 meters above, by the way, of another man's mine. So it's very, it's all connected and broken down and blocked up and made it look like it's all individual mines. I mean, it's not. They're all just one big network underground. Whether it's for water or living, or I don't know. Maybe it's the same as Nottingham. Maybe it's the same as Turkey. Who knows? But that's what we're here to work out. And just to put it into perspective for you, the, the Titan shaft, right, the largest shaft in the United Kingdom, is taller. You could literally fit the Blackpool Tower inside of it. That's how tall it is. So I just wanted to slip that in there just so you know what is going in. So if that was a natural shaft, that means water must have dripped down there and made that cavern and made that shaft. It's a load of cobblers. It might have been an air vent or it might have been where water passed through for this old world ancient civilization that's got wiped out. They clearly used nature on their side. Who knows, who knows what a guan. Who knows what a guan. So anyway, now I'm gonna show you the distance between Speedwell Cavern and Titan. So and you'll notice that you can't actually go any further than, than Speedwell. Like, so basically what's happened is you can see there's a massive, massive quarry behind Titan. And you've got like three cave complexes here, which all meet up underground, by the way. All of them meet up. And let me just give you, this Castleton is a town. So this shaft is about, this shaft, that quarry is about the size of four towns put together. Yeah, look at Castleton and then look at the quarry in the background. So this is Speedwell, where I went in. And it says here that we're 333 metres above sea level. And then look, I'm drawing a line straight over to this place here. So it's almost 3,000 feet. Almost 3,000 feet. It's incredible stuff, isn't it? And it was almost 3,000 feet from Speedwell Cavern to Blue John Cavern. And Blue John Cavern is the only place in the world where you can mine Blue John. Which is weird. But look, you've got all this area, proper raised mountain, mountainous, and then you've got, you've got there's, there's quite a few quarries around here as well. So it just goes to show, this place has been hit hard. So hard. And with all the other evidence that I've got from around this area, you've got all this megalithic block work. Um, not stacked up anywhere, literally piled up in places where it's been demolished and, and the military haven't finished their job. All they've done is put it into piles and I guess they just, what they were going to do but they didn't do it was put, put mud over it and then put grass over it and just let it grow but they never did that. They've just let it grow and there's moss over it and I guess in a hundred years it'll just look like a little mound. Anyway, who knows, who knows. So yeah, 
Speedwell Cavern was not a mine. There's no way in this world this was a mine. It was a connection or it was part of a subterranean network that was maybe to do with water or something to do with living or both at the same time. So this is us exiting. Let me know what you think is going on down there. And like I said, when we descended, it's like we almost went down to, 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 to the sea level. Because no matter where you are in the world, globe or not globe, sea level is the same wherever you are. Now let's have a Brucey. At the end of this month, I've got some serious footage to be going through. I'm going to be going through the oldest canal systems in the United Kingdom. And I'm going to be going to some old cave houses as well. And I'm going to be exploring all this stuff and I'm going to be giving you my two pence. So, and there's also a couple of little extra places I'm going at the end of the month. But I'm not, not, to, I'm not going to mention it yet, just in case they flop. But you guys are in for a massive treat, I'm telling you. And doesn't this look like we was in Nottingham? Doesn't it? Again, I'm painting this picture because it's not just Nottingham that's like this. There's loads of places like this. This is actually Kinva. This is this is the West Midlands, by the way. And that's where I'm going. And I'm going to be showing you this. And it's just like Nottingham. Just like anywhere else. Just like South America. Just like, just like anywhere we examine this old world. So, yeah, I'm going to be giving you my two pence there. And another thing. This is a message to Jonathan Levy. Mate. I know you watch my videos and I know you love my videos. You watch them all the time. And I know, I know this, you popped up in the group chat the other day and said that you're the king of Tartaria, which I don't, I do not disagree. But mate, me and you could knock up something spectacular. These images on the computer, on the computer, on the TV screen now, mate, are in America. I've got, an, I've got a site identical to this in England. Now, if me and you, with our drones, and our knowledge, if you went and filmed this site, mate, and I went and filmed the one in England, and we put this footage together, we would blow the internet up, mate. Now, I'm asking you just to work for me on this one topic, mate. We don't have to converse much. We don't even have to do Zoom call me or anything. You could just make a little 20-minute segment, and I'll make a 20-minute segment. You go to the place where I, 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 I've, I've shown you, because no one's speaking about that in America, mate. And that is... Mate, that stuff that there, mate, that needs to be filmed. And the world needs to see that. And I've got exactly the same in England. So if we put these together, man, mate, we're going to blow the internet up, mate. So Jonathan, if you, I know you've watched this, but other people, can you tag him in this so he can see? Like, this would be the one of the best documentaries on the internet. Like, someone in America, someone in England, same stuff. Both gone out and filmed it and putting it together, you know? That's dot connecting, mate. It's a big John, what'd you say, mate? Let's do a little sank sank together. Like I said, you haven't got a Zoom call me, you haven't got to communicate, just send me an email. I'll send you the location of that place. You can go and film it, make a little video of it. I'll go and do the same my end and we put it together. But people ain't doing this stuff online, mate, and we should be the first to do it. This community needs to grow. And what I notice is people are always like, everyone needs to work together. The more brains and the more eyes working together, the quicker you get answers. It's as simple as that. I've got to stop doing that. Scouse accent when I say simple as that. Right, this image. There are some channels online that are just uh, having people on the ride, I'm telling you. So, obviously, this channel now, if you watch this channel, you can easily work out what's going on here. Crystal clear, it's not hard to work out. These are geopolymer blocks in a sack. And what's happened is there's been a plank of wood that's been pushed into these sacks. Now, maybe it could have been. You, it's obvious that there was some sort of framing on the outside. That's why the front of the wall is so flush. So maybe this board in the middle, it could have been where they've left a the print there so they services can run down the wall. Maybe water. Or it could literally just be where two boards are meeting and they've used a piece in the, in the middle to connect the two bits of wood up. Do you get me? Like two boards on the outside and then connected by a board in the middle. But either way, my bottom line is... It, this is a plank of wood that's been pushed into the pillow blocks. That's the explanation for that. That is the explanation. And you've got channels going, how have they done this? This is incredible. Ancient high technology. Hey, it ain't. It's really simple. And like I've always said, mystery cells. Mystery cells. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this session. I hope you've seen something you haven't seen before. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. 
next week or sorry next month or this month but for next month the footage that you're going to get is going to be phenomenal so if you want to support me i'll be more than grateful all the links are in the description big up everyone for watching this channel and thanks for everything and it's growing lovely so one love guys ta-da ta-da